Hello, I'm Thor Gunnels. Today we'll be exploring the web apps Parlay and Google Me integrated together to facilitate a discussion of poetry and motivate students. These are web apps that can be used simultaneously to organize discussions, inspire dialogue, and offer a safe space for students to interact. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking on our logo during the video. Also leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started integrating Parlay and Google Meet during a discussion of poetry. First thing you want to do is prepare your class for the discussion. You need to have Google Meet set up as well as Parlay. You also need to have a poem selected for discussion, but we'll get to resources for that later. First, I want to walk you through how to set up Parlay. Go to parlayideas.com. From there, go ahead and click the Get Started button for teachers. Then you're going to want to click the Sign Up with Google button, which allows the Google integration so you can have your Google Classroom be a part of this as well. There are three buttons as you come in. This is my Google, this is my um, Parlay, so I'm going to walk you through this. There's New Roundtable, Browse Universe, and then this uh, Teacher Resources at the bottom. These are already pre-planned lessons in many different topics. You may want to look at this sometime. Uh, for today, though, we're just going to be looking at starting a new roundtable. Over here, while we're on the screen, there's where your profile is. You can change your picture over here. You can do a number of things here, too. And here's all your courses. Okay, clicking on New Roundtable, it asks what course is this for. I only have one, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. Um, online would be a, a more exhaustive sort of lesson that could be even outside of class that you could embed into a Google Classroom. You could do a number of things with it. Um, what we're doing today is just an integration for a face-to-face -face discussion using Meet. So what we'll do is click on a live round table. All right, from this screen, there are a number of things that open up for you. Uh, first off, this is sort of like a back button. It allows you to go back and make this into an online round table if you feel like this live discussion is not gonna be enough for you. Uh, here are a number of live discussions that you get here. You get nine free with Parlay. Um, so that right now it's opened up during the summer times. So you can see that there are more in here. The green one is one that I have live. It's a dummy one that I'll show you in a second. Um, here's where you invite your students. You can share a join code. You can link this to a document. You can also import them through a roster here. And you can also link out with this button right here to your Google Classroom, which is really cool. So you definitely want to have that in there. Uh, you can change the name of the live discussion here. If this is your first round table, you might want to watch this video with your class. It walks them through the features of Parlay, but also how to have conversations in sort of a civil manner. Uh, also, this one here is a teacher video that walks you through the functions of Parlay and what it does. Uh, down this side of the screen, you can do export data, you can edit as an assessment, you can do all sorts of things over here. Summary uh, comes up with different bars, graphs, even a word art that shows you the uh, number of things that were said and by whom. Um, here's a little waffle at the top with more resources for you. If you click on teacher resources, it actually opens an entire Google folder on your drive of things that you can do and questions answered by Parlay. Uh, if you click on the questions, you can type in a guiding question right here that shows up on all the students' notepads or their devices. Okay, so that could be something too if you want to make sure that they've got something to see when they log in. Okay, so that's the teacher side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click over to my live. And you'll see I've got a dummy student account set up. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, when the students come in, I think it's going to look like this. If there was a question posed, it's going to be up at the top. They can type their responses here to show you on your screen what they're thinking, or they can just use this as sort of a thinking space. When they're ready to discuss, they can click on these buttons at the bottom, which tap them in and out. Okay, so they've got a new idea. They can type in what's their new idea. They can type it in down here, and it shows up at the top. I'm just going to put one word in here to show you what it does. Okay, we can see it did the word hey over on the teacher screen. There's the kid that tapped in. Okay. And when they want to remove themselves, they click tap out. Challenge is similar. Um, who or what are you challenging? You know, this is just a similar thing that you can do instead of a new idea. You can sort of go, I don't believe that, or I want to challenge your idea. Uh, build on, also who or what are you building on? You can put the person's name in here, or you can build the concept. And then finally, you have this last thing here, it loads, is a question, which is just a basic question. What are you, who or what are you questioning? Um, it could be the activity, it could be the, the poem itself. I mean, 
you may be completely not sure about what's going on. Okay, if we click over to the teacher screen again, let me show you what we've got. Okay, you see the poem. Also, there's a couple of things here. You see there's a little hands at the top and then there's an ear. This corresponds to the same thing on the student screen. When you click on the hands, it's giving them a high five. Te students can do this to each other too. And it's cool because it shows up on their screen like that. Also, if you click on the ear, you want to hear from that person. Also, students can do that to each other, so they can see that too. On the teacher screen, if you see like three or four of these clicked right here, it means three or four people want to hear what this kid has to say. Okay. Now, from the teacher screen, there's a couple other things you can do. Um, you can remove the kid from the chat. So if they haven't tapped out, you can tap them out. Um, you can also tap them back in if they've forgotten and they want to talk. Um, you can also nudge them. So if they look like they've got something to say on Google Meet, you can go ahead and nudge them and say, hey, did you mean to say something? Or I think you really need to bring that up. Um, you can cancel that out. You can also put in a poll. You can create a poll and do this at any time, which is a nice little feature um, in case you want to do a check for understanding. A little word up here, if it says 54 tap, what that means is I've had this open the entire time. Um, since there are only nine of these, you can run this same live session over and over and over again. So if you want to do it all day long, you certainly can. Okay. All right. So there's the teacher screen. There's the student screen. Let me go ahead and show you on Meet. All right. On Meet, uh, you know how to start these already, so I'm not going to do that. I do want to show you a couple of extensions. Uh, first off, down at the very bottom in the comments in the, uh, the description section, you're going to see that we have some um, information for you. Here's a handout that we've got that's Google Meet Enhancements. There's Nod, Meet Attendance, Grid View, Snap Camera, Visual Effects, and Dualless. I'm going to go over three of these with you. Uh, the first one is Nod, and here it is right here. It looks like this little thumbs up right here. If the students download this and if you download it, uh, it also allows the students to give a thumbs up if they hear something they like. Uh, they can also do a thumbs down. Uh, they can wave. They can clap. Um, students can also raise their hand. So if you maybe don't see them on Parlay, you can go, oh, did you have a question? And you can address it here. Another one is called Grid View. And uh, I've got Grid View running right now, but you can't see it because of chat. But uh, so the chat is something you also want to have open. Uh, while you're doing discussions because kids are going to have a tendency to want to type into here and they want to talk about things on here and they're going to talk at Parlay at the same time. So your job is just basically an air traffic control to keep things running. I want to close that. Uh, grid view up at the top. It's right here. And if you enable grid view by default, it pops up. Uh, what this allows is more than the usual 16 max in here. You can get 50, 60 people in here at one time if you want to. Also, when people are talking, it lights up in this green. And then finally, you've got this dual list, which is really cool. Uh, if you want dual monitor support, ta-da, here you go. You don't have dual monitors. I'm talking to you on a laptop. So I've got this on one screen. I've got this on the other. And what this allows you to do is to have parlay discussions going on on one screen and this over here. And then if the kids are also talking to you on chat, they could be doing this at the same time. They can also be giving thumbs up to each other. They can be raising their hand. There are a number of things that can go on at the same time. So what are you going to discuss? Well, we're going to discuss some poetry. Slide this over here. All right, down at the bottom again, we have some links and we have some information for you. Here's a Teach Living Poet infographic with a number of new poets, uh, poets that are alive, poets that have uh, some things to say that may speak to a current generation. Uh, there's also a wavelet, wakelet down at the bottom, which has similar poets, but this also links out to other information too, like the full videos and web pages and so on. Here's an example of one thing that you could do using United States of Anxiety. Uh, you could play him doing a spoken word version of this. You could have this observed, you could put this on the screen. You could also print it and you could put it on your document camera. There's a number of things that you could do that could make this very helpful for you during a discussion. Okay, so anyway, uh, if you see that having all of this together at the same time is an ideal situation and kids are really going to enjoy this. If you have any questions, please reach out and talk to us, and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer anything for you. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos, or share the playlist below.
subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources like this cast podcast and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Deer Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.